This is George Lopez, and this is my Chingon podcast. And this is the eighth day, I say. It's beautiful. Are you doing your part? Hopefully everybody else is doing the same thing. I hope so. You know, I think that people have the attitude of like, um, it won't happen to me. This morning, about six o'clock in the morning, um, my side started hurting real bad, the bottom part of my stomach, right? So I told my old lady, I said, hey, babe, wake up. I go, Google, what size the appendix is on? You know what I mean? So she does that. She goes, it's the right side, but it was my left side that hurt it. So check this out. This is how much this coronavirus got me in the head. I go, fucking coronavirus got me in the, in the stomach. You know what I'm saying? I thought, <laughs> well, nobody knows, man. I mean, you know, hey, listen. <laughs> You know, we're we're casual about chorro, eh? We don't we don't we don't give chorro oh, enough credit, you know. Chorro yeah, is exactly. it, chorro is your body saying, "I don't want this in my in my system." And all of us are like, "How was the food?" Oh, I me pegó chorro, and then you still keep going because you know you might have a high school reunion coming up. You want to be thin, thinner, or <laughs> you might be getting married, you know. No, no, but check it out. But check it out. What, what happened was two days ago, I did. Uh, 200 leg lifts. So you know how it's always two days later you get sore? And that's yeah. what it was. Because I started going to the bathroom to go take a shower just in just case I had to go to the emergency. And then all of a sudden, the other side started hurting. You dig what I'm saying? It's like, wow, man, it's just, I'm just sore right now. So I'm good. Right? I mean, I'm sore right now, but I ain't got nothing going on. So I'm good. You know what I mean? So, so, so I, I don't know. I don't know um, if, if when you had the accident, how, how are your, how's your, how's your mobility and all of that? All that stuff. Well, right now it's just it's just sore because I was working out, bro. I forgot I was working out two days ago with these with these stomach exercises. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. all it was. I'm sore right now, but that's what it is. It's just not. It's not. It's no sickness at all. It's just yeah. It's no, 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 no. I know that, but I mean, you you feel you feel good. Your legs are good. Aside from working out. Oh, I'm feeling. I'm good. good. I'm, I'm, I've been in the house eight days myself. I'm I'm, I'm doing my part. Right now. I hope yeah, everybody good. does. I mean. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody's everybody's got to do that, especially. You know, for kids, man, I mean, I think the thing with kids is because they're not used to being inside the house that they want to go out, like, they're inside, they're inside when you can go outside, but now that you can't go outside, now everybody wants to go outside, and you know, it's, it's, not, it's not safe. So, you know what, bro, you know, I'm a homebody by nature, I love being home, I, I like being home with my family and go to work, that's all I like to do, you dig? But it's weird... When you have to stay home, because now I want to go. I want to go golfing right now. I want to go go have dinner. I want to go to the restaurant. But that's what you usually do. Go out, have dinner. You know, I'm a homebody by nature. I love being home. I, I like being home with my family and go to work. That's all I like to do. You dig? But it's weird when you have to stay home. Because now I want to go. I want to go golfing right now. I want to go go have dinner. I want to go to the restaurant. But that's what you usually do. Go out, have dinner. You know. You know. So golf is. You know. You you play my tournament. Golf's a great a great sport. A lot of the guys that I hang out with were going to golf, but you know, I think golf, man, like it's for when you have nothing on your mind. It makes you forget things. And right, you, know, you right. go out there and you forget about something you might, an issue or something you, you want to get off your mind because you're out there, it's quiet, it's peaceful, and it's just, you know, you and a couple of buddies. But with all of this, like those guys were playing, I didn't leave because to me, if I would have went golfing, it's still in your mind, man. It's still in your head. I mean, they close everything down but the course. You can't touch the flag. You can't go to a gym and play basketball. You can't go, and if you box or if you work out in the gym, you, you, you can't do any of that stuff. Exactly. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, I knew your tournament was coming up soon, so I was – my game was getting on points. So I was practicing a lot, you know. Yeah. I swing my club inside the house, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know, dude, I know. But you got a good lady, man. I'm, I'm telling you, it's it's very difficult to to really find somebody like like you know. I've seen you and your wife at you know we saw the Ch El Chicano and uh, and times that I've been around you guys. And congratulations, man, because not only do you have a an incredible relationship, an incredible family, but also the connection between you two and the love and the respect that you guys have for each other is. I'm going to tell you, it's very rare in my eyes that I saw anything like that. Uh, growing up, so I, I just want to tell you, to you and your and your and your wife, man, that you guys have an incredible uh, family. George, you know, incredible. you were saying that my wife came in here and gave me my hot hot lemon juice. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the the kills your the the, the stuff inside. Yeah. So as you were saying that, my wife was bringing in. Look at, she brought my hot my hot tea. And you know what? So thank you for that. Can I? Over another cup, though. I don't think that was broke. There's something wrong with that one. 
because it saves rounds all that. Were you, were you shooting? You guys shooting and rehearsing and stuff? You know what, brother? I, we were to, I, I, I'm doing another show right now before the Mayans, and uh, we were like on nine episodes in already. And I can't say the show because I'm not supposed to be on the show. Okay. But um, uh, and uh, so we were nine episodes in, and then um, I get the call that the Mayans got pushed. We were supposed to start the Mayans soon already. So they got pushed another two weeks. And then so the show that I was on, they stopped it the next day. You know, it's really weird, man. You know, so it says, you know, it's, uh, God bless that we're working, you know, but it's just, uh, I'm happiest when I'm working, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of people don't have disposable income, man. A lot of people are, they live, you know, if not paycheck to paycheck, paycheck to other paycheck to paycheck. So it, this is going to be hard on a lot of people. Listen, any of those companies are nothing without, without the, the people that support those companies, you know, it's like trying to sail with no water, man. All the people are the water that floats all everybody's company, you know, places right. that um, will survive small business. People should go back and support small businesses, you know, places to go get food that aren't a, a, not Gelson's or like a, a, a Bonds Pavilion, but you know, Marquetas and liquor stores and places that, in your own community that you know those that means a lot to those people that's right very good point george thank you for bringing that up because i wanted to say that but you put it out there man it's like really you know, a little right there i live by western a lot of those massage parlors are going to close up so I, I like to go be there and support <laughs> you know, don't ever take one of those candies with you because that's when you know that you've been always culiado con los chinitos what a little red was that you're only supposed to get at christmas if you if your wife sees that in your change forget it <laughs> I wonder if I wonder I wonder if uh, if all the people that are held in the detention centers are six feet apart. I don't think so. I don't know when this country turned on us, but we're, we're the most valuable resource that this country has, and you can see it right now. Momo is telling me that all of the people are still working uh, in in produce. All the people that still work in, uh, on you know everything from a vine are out there still working, and and as as much as the nurses, one hundred percent nurses, doctors, volunteers. All the people that work in hospitals, all the orderlies, and all those people are incredibly important to to the people who are sick, to the people that they find are not sick, but to all of us that consume and we all eat something is that the farm workers and all those people that work in there are incredibly important and they should be better represented, their image should be better, and you know they should they should get uh, the respect that they deserve. You and I really have never spent a lot of time together, but we have the, the most respect and love for each other when we ever always, like, always it's, one of few, it's one of the few, I think even more than the guys that I grew up with. Like I, 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 I get you, man. And I love you. I have a tremendous amount of respect for you. And we don't even spend that much time together. And we have that, that bond. Huh? You know what? The thing is, is George, I, what I see about that is we always respected each other's space. You dig what I'm saying, Karnat? And, and that, that right there, is the utmost respect. You know what I mean? Instead of being here, I'm gonna maybe see what I can do for a record. No, I don't do that kind of. You know, we we're self-made, bro. We self-made. Right. You know what I'm saying? And we know how tough it was. So we give each other that space, which and you get more respect that way. That's gonna get along so good, you know. So how, how did how did how did stand up uh, appeal to you? Where, where, what was the what was the little thing that said I want to do that? You know what, Carnot is because I was raised. I was from the guys. I was such a hardcore guy. I wouldn't let you let look at me. So my mentor said, you know what, you need to start doing stand-up because you had to let people look at you and make fun of you and laugh at you. Because before I, I'd hit you, you know what I'm saying? That was just me. And you know what? It, it was uh, it was therapy for me, bro. You know, and plus, and then I was having a good time, you know, and they laughed at me, it was okay. You know, it was, uh, it took a while. You know, at first I would get, I remember the Hector, would it be a Hector? I will just say, I would just look at them and say, what do you want to do, homie? You know, I was like that, that kind of comic, you know? And then I, and they said, no, you can't be doing that. You can't be challenging the audience, you know what I'm saying? So I had a nerve, bro, you know, you know, to, you know, to just laugh with it and go with it. And you know what, bro, it was like the best thing. Comedy and acting saved me, you know, it really did, you know. I, well, you're good at it, man. See, and I, and I, was, I was sober. I was not, uh, like two years sober when I got in. You dig what I'm saying? So my only high, my only high was to be on stage. Right. That was my rush. You know, you know when, when, you're, when you're an addict like I am, I was finding any stage I could be on. I mean, I was doing like five times a week on every comedy club. The tequila, remember tequilas in East LA? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Anywhere, anywhere somebody had a stage, I was there. 
was my rush. You know, when my, my, my show first started, um, I went to the Quiet Cannon. I really hadn't gone to the Quiet Cannon uh, right. from Montebello when I was uh, uh, coming up, you know, because I was from the Valley. But I went there one night when my show was on. And I'm going to tell you, man, if they would have said, you can live here and give up everything you have and you and we'll take care of you in the quiet. I would have given up everything to stay in the quiet cannon that night. I saw wow. the most beautiful women. I heard the most incredible music. I saw the best people. Hey. And I'm like, man, is this is this what it's like? Like out here? Not about me, just about the people from from East Los, from Montebello out there that they just they just they just knew how to have a good time. So I remember when I when I, I remember when we did the get locals back in the day, you introduced me. We introduced me. That's when I knew, I, well, at least I thought I made it, man. You know, what I'm that, that was like the. I have to put the, it in here. It was a, it was a crazy introduction, man. It was, it was fun. It was no, fun. that was one of the funniest introductions, bro. You know I me. Mean? Then I, I posted yeah. it up again. Somebody else posted it up not too long ago, and uh, but yeah, you know when I when you introduced, see, I was in the wings waiting for you to bring me up, and we started saying all that and stuff. It was uh, I was like. All right, the next guy, I'm gonna read this guy's interview because this vato has done so many, uh, this vato, this gentleman is too <laughs> A little Chicano, I mean, I'm just to prove that we can read, because this guy's looking at, this guy's looking, he's probably not gonna be able to read it. <laughs> all right, this vato right here has been on all the crime-related dramas. Let me see. X-Files, uh, NYPD Blue, JAG, Mi familia, my family, for those who are bilingually impaired. <laughs> con, con Air, or if you, you're Chicano, Con Air. <laughs> and he's got four movies coming out. Chingo, he should be hosting. <laughs> A movie called Traffic, Road Dogs 2. Cabron, I missed the first one. <laughs> Tom Katz and the bass. Welcome, Emilio Rivera! Right. Pump me up, but then when you know when you get an intro like that, it makes you you gotta you better you better throw yeah. it down. Yeah, I wish that that show had better. I wish that it had better people running it because everybody loved that show. Yeah, everybody was on that show, and everybody was good that was on that show. And they were fortunate, man. Like like they have entered in us and all that stuff, but I don't think there's been a show that's been able to capture Def Jam. Yes, of course. But that was a show with all these great Latino comedians from everywhere. And that, um, and it going away like that was, was it, it was an injustice, man, because it, it was a great, the, the, the idea of it was great. The, the, the comedian, it's just one of those things that I don't think it's very hard to duplicate. I haven't seen a show like that since. No, and it showed that we were just as funny as anybody else, brother, you know what I'm saying? Really and I got to tell a story real quick. Um, it was from Momo Rodriguez, who's on the, who's with us right now. He was having a thing for a, for a show he wanted to do, and then I went in the green room. You were in the green room, right? And then you and you asked me, "Hey, Miguel, you know, uh, go to do five minutes." I said, "Ah, you know, I'm just here to just here to just here to watch, bro." We go, "Okay." Then you go on stage. You go, "Emilio, you're gonna do five minutes, cabrón." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I wouldn't did the five minutes. So you didn't think any of that story, man. It was awesome, bro. I asked no, them all what? month, hey, Emilio, can you perform? Now? You know, I'm just, no. just going to hang out, bro. But then I told my old lady, when George Lopez calls you out, you better go up. You That's know right. what I'm saying? That's right. That's you right. go. That was feeding right. me. Yeah, that was awesome, man. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, the Jeffrey Osborne clip from my tournament is one of my favorite clips of you singing with, uh, with <laughs> Jeffrey Osborne. Emilio, let it go! I can't sing. Because Mr. Jeffrey Osborne hit me up, I'm going to do it. Emilio! crazy with that dude. Just, you know what i think i think the parties are better outside than inside you know golf has a lot of parties inside you gotta get the people outside hey homie i do i do about eight to ten celebrity tournaments a year and you know what out of all of them i i wait for yours brother because that one is like it's like uh the tournament plus a quinceanera plus a well together you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs>
that's how, that's how I describe it, bro. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, yeah. Day, bro. First class operation all the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I know how Danny, you know, I did that show with Danny, uh, St. George, uh, and Danny was so funny, man. And I know that he got into acting because he went with somebody, I think, to an audition or something. How, how did how did you find how did you find the, acting? Danny, Danny uh, he was uh, he had just gotten out of prison. He was doing a uh, and they needed a boxer, Tracy a boxer, Eric Roberts in the movie right. called Runaway Train. Yeah, it's a great right. story. It's one of my favorite movies as well. So it just worked out for him. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, Danny's and I just talked to Danny yesterday. I was checking up on Danny because you know we pick up on each other. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he, and Danny's doing good right now. He's doing good right now. You know. He's one of a kind, Danny, man. You know, when we were doing, he, really did. he didn't have his shirt on. And, and I was looking at him and I go, hey, um, I've seen that. I've seen that tattoo before. Like, what, what is that from? Like, I, I, I can't, I can't put my finger, but I've seen it. He goes, Georgie, Georgie, it's from the Rosarita refried bean can. <laughs> I go, that's where it's from. When he was in prison, somebody stole the label from oh. the beans, and the Vato had it, and Danny said, hey, I want to get this put on my chest. So the guy was working on it, and then he got transferred for to another prison. Danny had half of the vieja on his chest, and the guy says, don't let anybody touch that, man. I'll be back. And like two years later, the guy came back, and he finished it. That's crazy. I didn't know that, bro. I got, I got to call oh. Danny on that one. I was on Howard Stern and we were talking about Danny and I said, he's going to, and Howard Stern said, he's going to be in here uh, next week. I said, all right, you know, have him, have him tell you the story about his, the, uh, the tattoo on his chest. And he goes, you tell us. I go, no, I'm not going to tell you. You, you, you ask him. It's, it's better if he tells you. That's he's a great awesome story. Man. It's good to see that he got away from his flip phone too. <laughs> Danny yeah, so I text, I text Danny, but Danny, my chick that doesn't text on me. If I text Danny like I did yesterday, he calls back. It's a trip, you know what I mean? He don't text. Yeah. yeah. To, to, to the well, character. I took, him to the, I took him to the Laker game, and we were sitting right there by Jack Nicholson. He wasn't there that, that day. His, his daughter was there and a friend. And Danny brought out a camera that still had film. And he, was, he didn't take any pictures of the basketball. But when the Laker girls went out there, he took all pictures of Laker girls. And if I turned away or if I was looking at the menu, he would say, Georgie, 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 you're missing this. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a solid one. We were, we were, uh, when we were, we went to the Super Bowl when they were playing the Patriots. And uh, they had me, Danny Trejo, and Edward James Olmos on uh, doing a, a rally for the Rams. It was, it was, it was, it felt really good to be on stage with those two about the right there, bro. It was a good oh, time. Man. That's a good. That's a good threesome right there. I got Eddie playing golf too now because we did that movie Walking with Herb. Yeah, when when is that coming out? Because I'm looking forward to that, man. Well, I was gonna come out with nobody's infected. I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're all in this together, Carnal. Hopefully, no, no, you're right. We we all we all are in this together, and in every corner of the world right now, people are inside, and you're not supposed to go outside. And you know, Italy had a surge. There was just somebody else. I'm watching the news. Somebody else passed away in L.A. So. When they tell you to stay home, it's not like, you know, go to the park. They close the parks. They close the beaches. And the governor's I think, has done a great job, and the mayor's done a great job of telling people and, and making sure that the word is out that you have to stay home. I mean, it's, you're just not, you're not letting, you know, you wouldn't, your mom wouldn't let anybody in the kitchen when she was cooking until it was over. You got to stay home. You got to not, you, you can't, we can't keep going out and having them try to think they're going to fix this thing because it's everywhere. How hard it is for Momo to stay away from the flea markets? That's horrible, bro. I like your sarap in the back, homeboy. Thank you, bro. It's a uh... car strap. Oh. Chicano Legos back there. <laughs> <laughs> Chicano Legos. Hey, 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 good talking to you, bro. It's better. Everything is better. Me, you, and Mo, uh, me, you and Momo get together. We'll, we'll, we'll get down to the guitar yeah. for you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hey, let's go to a game, a L uh, LAFC game. I'm down. I'm down. Crazy over yeah, there. this is. Like, you been there before already? No, I haven't. Oh, bro, it's a lot yeah. of fun. Homie. Yeah, yeah. Look. It's a lot. Of fun. All right, man. Be safe, man. I love you, man. I love you too, George. You take care of yourself. Stay in the pad, homeboy. Yeah, of course. I already put a glory hole. It's just be right here. This is George Lopez, and this is my Jingle podcast.